Sea Souls is a minions game where you control the minions of Dagon to punish disloyal townsfolk. For those who don't know, Dagon is a Lovecraftian deity from the Cthulhu mythos. But he also appears as a deity in the Conan universe. Lovecraft and Howard knew each other, and there's some interesting overlap between the lore of their fictional settings. The story is basically that you are Dagon, and you wish that your high priest submit himself as a sacrifice. He refuses, and therefore he must be punished. The game is quite dark, but it has some hilarious moments. Perhaps not intentionally, but I find the high priest's voice hysterical. It's a very simple game. How it works is you're sort of like the Will of Dagon, and you direct your minions by moving this circular pentagram thing around the map. Wherever you move this pentagram thing, the minions will follow it. If you hold spacebar, the minions will attack. When you kill enemies, they will occasionally drop money. The money you find will fill the orb in the top left of the screen. Once it's fully filled, you're able to summon more minions. You also find altars around the map where you can summon more minions. Although it's a simple system, it can be quite challenging. The townsfolk set up barricades which you have to break through, but they'll also be throwing Molotov cocktails and stuff on you which you need to dodge. So you have to be quite active, making sure that your minions aren't sitting there getting hit. There's a lot of different minions to control, and I haven't finished the game yet so I don't know about all of the minions, but I'll list the ones I've used. Each one has different attributes, which are represented by an A to E scoring system. A bit like in school, where A is the best and E appears to be the worst. I haven't seen an F yet, but maybe it exists. The attributes are Health, Attack, Speed, and Horror. The first minions you get are the Swarm. They're a bit like Zerglings, very fast, very numerous, but fragile, and great at surrounding enemies and stopping them from retreating. The crab is like a tank. He doesn't deal much damage and isn't very fast, and also isn't very scary, but he has a lot of health. He's also very resistant to fire, which is great, because there's a lot of fire enemies in this game, like a dude with a flamethrower, and also those Molotov cocktail throwers. Cultists are humans, or perhaps deep ones, that worship Dagon. They have a ranged attack, which has high damage output, but they don't have much health and are not very frightening either. The worm is a slow-moving melee minion that leaves a trail of slime behind it that slows enemies. It also deals extra corrosive damage to wooden structures, which is a great help against the barricades the townsfolk will set up to slow you down. The fishmen are great melee units, great all-rounders, but they're also very horrifying, they've got a B for horror, so this makes them especially useful. The only problem they've got is that they're kinda slow, which makes it hard to dodge molotovs and stuff with them. The Droger is a slow-moving minion that spawns several smaller minions when it dies. It looks like a great big snail. This is one of my favourite minions, actually. The tiny things that spawn when it dies looks a bit like head crabs from Half-Life. If you have a few Droger and they all explode, you end up with a huge horde of these little head crab things. They're at least as good as the swarm. The Lich is a skeletal spellcaster who will raise ghosts from slain human enemies. The ghosts are timed minions. The Lich will also use a kind of magical attack against enemies, but it deals hardly any damage at all. The main benefit of the Lich is his horror aspect, which will send enemies running in fear pretty much instantly. I also unlocked a black cat by making a choice during the storyline. I won't spoil which choice it was, and I assume that had I made a different choice, I'd have gotten a different minion instead. But the black cat is a very nice one. It's got high DPS and can pounce, instantly closing the distance with the enemy and clawing them. This is especially good for catching peasants before they're able to escape into their houses, but it's also great for catching enemies that like to shoot at you and then run away. There's also this big frog. The frog will hop towards enemies and then explode. It's very good at densely packed enemies, but it's pretty difficult to use, I find. So these are just some of the minions the game offers. I'm fairly certain that there's a lot more I haven't found yet. Another aspect of the game is the Apostles. The Apostle you choose has a different effect on gameplay. The first Apostle you get is Agra de Pesca, who offers benefits to the Swarm and Worms. 
The others can be unlocked by playing the game in a special way. Here's the other apostles I've managed to unlock. Ivan Dorovich, 13th. He starts with spitters and worms, and with him you can only choose from three cards. He also has access to cheat cards. Saint Tatan will be unlocked after you kill 100 humans of cultists, and with him it's possible to sacrifice cultists at ritual sites. I haven't figured out how to actually sacrifice them yet though, so I've got no idea what this does. Solaris is unlocked by completing 10 levels using 5 minions or less. With her, the less minions you have, the stronger your minions become. This is probably my favourite apostle, and not only because she's a beautiful fishwife, but also because she rewards my bad habit of getting all my minions killed. I very often end up with most of my minions dead at the end of a level. Saint Christina Blavatsky is probably the best apostle for necromancy fans. With her, you cannot recruit normal minions anymore, but your ghosts become permanent. This is quite nice if you want an army of spirits, but I find this apostle especially difficult to play. This game is pretty dark and violent, which is expected and very fitting and welcome for a game about Dagon. When you defeat a boss, Dagon's tentacles come and hold each limb and then tear him apart. It's got a nice atmosphere and the pixel art is very endearing. The music is also very, very good. I like it a lot. It's also the first game I've played that actually lets you be Dagon, which is damn awesome and very unique. The minion mechanics are very nice, and in many ways, it's kind of a perfect minions game. I can't fault its minion mechanics, so I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. It's a great game, and if you love minions and Lovecraft, and you want to play as the bad guy, this game will entertain you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you now have a good game to play. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos on necromancy games, books, etc.